Hi, in a recent EEV blog video, Dave showed what appeared to be a problem with the dual slope triggering mode on certain Rigol oscilloscopes. But what I'd like to show is that the behavior is actually completely correct. So what we can see here is a 12 MHz square wave, more or less, and it's currently set to trigger on a rising edge, and that's exactly what we're seeing. Now the problem appears to appear when we switch to dual slope triggering where we, we would expect to see a superposition of waves where the uh, waveform is going down at this point, falling and rising. Uh, but instead we just seem to see what appears to be just a falling edge triggered waveform. But it turns out that by just choosing an appropriate value for the hold off we get exactly the behavior that we were hoping for. Now the reason for this is because hold off is just an intrinsic part of how triggers work. Uh, you can't have a trigger with no hold off at all. And so what that means is that the triggering system will ignore trigger events that happen within the hold off period. So suppose for example that the oscilloscope triggers off this rising edge here. If the hold off period prevents the scope from triggering until it reaches this point here, then the next trigger point that it will read will be another rising edge. And then it will get another rising edge over here, and so on and so forth. So you just see it's as if the oscilloscope is just triggering on rising edges. Uh, but of course if you force the oscilloscope to sort of restart, it might end up locking onto all the falling edges instead. So you can see that as I just move the horizontal knob around, it sort of flickers between the two different states. We can verify that the hold off is working as we expect by having a look at what the period of this waveform is, and it's 83 nanoseconds. So what that means is that if we delay the hold off by 83 nanoseconds, then if it was sitting here before, then if we add 83 nanoseconds, the hold off period will end here instead and we'll get identical behavior. But as we transition through, we'll end up getting the opposite behavior, the behavior that we want. So I've currently got a hold off of 100 nanoseconds, so I'm going to move through to 183 nanoseconds and we'll see what happens. So we're at 120. Okay, now 131 nanoseconds, we see the behavior that we probably were hoping for in the first place. Then we keep on going through, and by the time we reach 183, we return to the so-called incorrect behavior. So that's all there is to it. Dual edge triggering interacting with a hold off to produce what might be slightly unexpected results and I would expect exactly the same behavior from even analog scopes with the hold off feature. Um, by the way, if anyone out there has an analog oscilloscope, I'd love it if you could try it and uh, I'll link in, put an annotation on the video here and link in it down below if someone uh, d demonstrates the same thing happening on an analog oscilloscope. We can also demonstrate a similar thing happening with slightly unusual waveforms even on just a rising edge trigger. So what I have here is a train of pulses whose leading edges are equally spaced, but the pulses are ultimately short, long, short, long, short, long, and so on. Now currently I've got it triggered using the pulse mode so that you know I can actually show you what the waveform looks like. But if I change it back to edge triggering, we get what we might expect, which is a superposition of the waveform is triggered on the start of the short pulse and the start of the long pulse. Now just let me zoom in a bit here. I can now do the same thing as before. I can modify the hold off. Okay, so that's a good value. So what you can see now is I've got the oscilloscope triggering on edges only and it's just got a hold off setting and looking at the waveform you would expect that well I'm just looking at a waveform with a completely consistent long pulse in it it's all there is there but if I just move the horizontal dial just to sort of rejigger the system and uh, sort of randomize the starting point of the triggering 
see that if I just twitch it back and forth, it changes more or less randomly. Sometimes you're looking for rare pulses, one in 10,000 pulses of the wrong length. Here's a view that makes it look like a one in two event is never happening. But nevertheless, uh, it's really hard to make an oscilloscope, as far as I can tell, that avoids this behavior. So, the oscilloscope is a machine, machines are dumb, they just follow the instructions that you give them. And I can't think of a way of fixing this problem that isn't worse than the problem itself. One interesting thing that I came across while I was playing with this is it turns out that the triggering system seems to be completely independent from the acquisition engine, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So if I set the hold off to 3.31, then that causes it to just lock on to a pulse of one kind. 3.30, that's the magic threshold where it actually manages to catch both pulses at the same time. Now if I zoom out quite a long way, we see exactly the same behavior. 3.30, 3.31. This is interesting because it implies that the triggering engine is running pretty much independently of the acquisition engine. Because if the trigger actually waited for the acquisition to finish before starting the hold off, then you would expect changes in record length to cause changes in behavior. But that's not what we see at all. So the trigger engine is actually going trigger, trigger, trigger at each of these points. And the acquisition engine is just ignoring it until it's ready to start a new acquisition and then it waits for the next trigger signal, even though it's actually missed a whole bunch in the meantime. Anyway, I hope that uh, clears up some of the confusion, and thanks for listening. See you!